nothing changes. Hi, it's Miss Alyssa. Hi from Miss Jordan. Hi, it's Miss Jamie. Hi, it's Miss Anna. Hi, it's Miss Wendy. Hey you guys, it's December. Oh my goodness, I am so happy that we are finally in the month of Christmas. Welcome to church today. My name is Miss Jordan. I work at the Richmond campus at RPC. I'm actually here right now inside of the big tent, which is one of the buildings where our fourth and fifth graders hang out on the weekends. December is my favorite month of the year and I bet you can guess why. I love Christmas. And today we're gonna kick off talking about Jesus being promised to the world and God always keeps his promises and he promised that he would send a savior and so his own son Jesus was born and we celebrate Christmas to honor his birth when he came into the world so that he could save us all from our sins. So today is going to be fun and full of festive stuff. That was a lot of F's. Fun and full of fest festive stuff. Can you say that three times fast? Try. Ready to go. Fun and full of festive stuff. Go. Oh, you did better than I did. Well, to get us started, I think that we should play a little game. So, I'm going to play a couple clips of Christmas songs that you probably know, but it's going to be just a tiny little part, like five or eight seconds. And then you're going to have to write down what you think it is. Here's the catch. There's no words in the song, so it's only going to be the music, but I bet that you know more than you think you do. So we'll get something to write with and write it down. Then when you're finished, post your answers in the comments below. You can have mom or dad help you with that. And then one lucky winner is going to get pizza delivered to their house just for playing. So go ahead. Right now you got 10 seconds, super fast. One, two, three, four. Get something to write with in a piece of paper. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, got your paper, you got something to write with. Check it out. Okay, don't forget to post your answers in the comments below. I love Christmas music. It makes me so happy and puts me in such a good mood. Um, now I think it's time for a brand new memory verse. So remember, I always like doing motions with my memory verses because when I'm doing something with my hands and I'm using my mouth, it helps it to stick in my brain. So when I have the motions, then it kind of triggers me and cues me on what is going to come next. So I'm going to teach you the words and the motions. This memory verse is from the book of Luke, and we're going to be in the book of Luke all month long looking at the Christmas story. So here's how it starts. Ready? Okay, ready? Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And hold your hands out like a Bible. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Okay, let's do it again. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Awesome! So here's the deal with that memory verse. When that news was announced, can you imagine what people were thinking? I bet it was a mix of a lot of the different emotions. I bet people were excited. I bet they were probably a little confused. Like, what do you mean? The Messiah, the Lord is a baby? He was just born? Huh? They probably have all kinds of questions. 
Oh, but this story gets really good. Okay, take a look at our Bible story today. Don't forget that memory verse. Write down Luke chapter 2, verse 11 somewhere, and you can look it up in your Bible at home. You can look it up online, on your computer. You can look, look it up using the Holy Bible app on your phone. There's like so many places where we can find God's word, and that's pretty awesome. So here's our Bible story today. I will see you back in a second. Don't move. Good boy. Hey, what are you? <gasps> On the first day of Christmas, nobody gave to me a peppermint candy. Mm. Let's see what else is in this thing. <clears throat> All right. Ooh. Oh, you can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. Oh yes, I can. Mmm. Mmm. Tasty. Okay. What else? Oh, cool. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Can't eat you. Hmm. <laughs> oh, what's that? <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> ah, apple cider. Not bad. Not bad at all. Hmm. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know anyone was in there. And now for the most important day of all. I wonder what's inside. Oh, hey, Brandon, Merry Christmas. Hey, Brandon, I know you're still out there. Brandon? Christmas. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and we're glad you're hanging out with us as we kick off this festive holiday season. Question for you, John. Hit me. Okay. Thank you. Now go ahead and ask me the question. Okay, what does your family do to kick off the holiday season? Uh, we eat rotten fish. What? Yeah, it's called lutefisk. It's kind of a nasty fish jelly. Yeah, why? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> We've just always done it. Yeah, when your nose hairs start burning with the stink of rotting fish, you know it's Christmas time with that tasty dish. My family watches Christmas movies. Oh, we do that too! It's a Wonderful Life is the perfect movie to start out with. The holidays haven't begun until Clarence gets his wings. Ah, wife. spoiler alert! Hey, you've never seen It's a Wonderful Life? It's on my list. Oh. What, what do you want, John? What, what do you want? You, 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 you want the moon? You, you, you just say the word and, I, and I'll throw a lasso around it and then pull it down. <laughs> of course you'd pick a Christmas movie from the 1900s. It's a classic. It's uh -huh. one of the best movies of... The, okay, fine. And you know what? What Christmas movie would you start with? Ah! Oh. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. La 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 okay. okay, Elf is fine, but it's really more of a kid's movie. What? It is. It, I mean, if you knew real Christmas movies like oh, I do, oh, you would I know to... Christmas movies more than you, I bet. Oh, well, well, we'll see about that. It's time to play Name That Christmas Movie. <laughs> bah, humbug. That's easy. The Muppet Christmas Carol or any version of A Christmas Carol. <sighs> Anybody want to play a reindeer game like Monopoly? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Not a movie, it was TV. A TV movie? I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. I don't know, something old. White Christmas. 
Or if you want to get technical, the song originated in the 1942 film Holiday Inn, also uh -huh. with Bing Crosby. It burns. <laughs> you look like a deranged Easter Bunny. Christmas story. I'm a prince, but I don't want anyone to know because my evil twin brother who works as a chef at the North Pole might hop on the Christmas train to stop me from finding my true love, if she even has time for love, while balancing her successful newspaper column in New York City and an architecture firm in Los Angeles. <gasps> I only have one and a half hours to meet the girl, fall in love, save the world, and discover the true meaning of Christmas. I have no idea. Really? It's so simple. It's every Hallmark Christmas movie ever. <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. guys oh we're just discussing christmas movies i love christmas movies jingle all the way is the best i'll know if you move because i have the ears of a snake classic i agree hey so what you got for us today well today we're setting up the entire christmas story it's like a preview of what's to come did you say preview kellen I did. Like a movie preview? Well, we've got your back, Kellen. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Around 700 years before Jesus was born, there was a prophet named Isaiah. Now, a prophet was a person God chose to be his messenger, and they were often given a glimpse of what the future would be like. Here's what Isaiah wrote. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. The child Isaiah wrote about was... Wait, Kellen, no, no, no spoilers. We've, we've got a preview. Something like this, Kellen? Over 2,000 years ago, in the city of Nazareth, a young girl named Mary was visited by an angel. But do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You're going to get pregnant and have a son. You must call him Jesus, and he will be called the Son of the Most High God, and his kingdom will last forever. Mary may have been frightened, but God had a plan. What God says, he will always do. Okay, good, now I can tell you. When Isaiah wrote about the son God was giving us, he was really writing about Jesus. Think about how incredible that is. 700 years before Jesus came, God promised that he would come. Continue. After an emperor's decree and a long journey, Mary and the man she would marry, Joseph, found themselves in the city of Bethlehem. But no one expected what happened next. With no rooms available, Mary gave birth to her baby in a place fit for animals. The baby boy was wrapped in cloths and laid in a manger. Jesus is the Son of God. Isaiah wrote that he would be a ruler, a mighty God, a father, a prince. No one expected the Savior to be born with animals. But God has always done things that are unexpected. You're right about that, Kellen. Thank you. Because God had more surprises in store. God sent an angel to lowly shepherds keeping watch over their sheep. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. So buckle your seatbelts because ready or not, here comes Christmas. Wow, way to go guys. Thank you. Doesn't that get you excited about Christmas? For sure. Just think of what Isaiah's words meant for those people years ago. They'd been hoping for a savior, so God made them a promise that he would send one. And it was Jesus. Yep, God always keeps his promises. So there's always a reason to have hope. 
That's a great way to look at it. Thanks. Now, thank you guys for those previews. I'm thinking of watching some Christmas movies right now. Jingle all the way. Here I come. Put that cookie down. No. What was that? As I'm from Jingle All the Way. That was... Oh, yeah. Reveal the question. What are you hoping for? What are you hoping for this Christmas, John? Uh, maybe a little more peace and understanding. Ooh, good start. More calm and civil debates and discussions. That would be nice. And then some new headphones. All right. <laughs> we'll see you next week for more Christmas. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And that was the So-and-So Show. It was. So we have the Bible because there's been people throughout history that have written down what have happened. The amazing events in history, the good things and the bad things, they've written them down so that we would have them and we can learn from them, right? These are real things with real people that lived on this same earth that you and I live on right now. That's so cool. And the Bible's full of amazing events that shape our history. There's been some incredible things that have happened, like when God created the world way back at the beginning in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. That was one of the first amazing events that we have from the Bible. And then there's, there's many, many, many more things that happen later, like when Moses led his people to cross through the Red Sea and Jesus parted the sea so that they could make their way across, or when the Israelites won at the Battle of Jericho, or when David defeated Goliath the giant, and David was just this small kid, and he had some stones and he defeated this giant that should have been able to beat him in, in a battle. But guys, there have been hundreds of examples of amazing events where God has kept his promises and protected his people. Here's the best news. He said, I'm going to send the best gift that you will ever get, the most important thing you'll ever need, a savior. Just wait, this happened many, many years ago. Now, when people were promised this, they believed God, but do you think they were expecting a baby? Like I said earlier, when, when you imagine a savior, someone who's going to fix everything, pay the price for your sins, were you imagining a baby? I don't know about you, but I kind of imagine something really big or like crazy happening in the sky or I don't know, but a baby being born is probably not the way I would have thought that it would happen. But God kept his promises and that baby grew up to be a boy and then a teenager and then a grown up. And then he did the ultimate thing by dying on the cross to pay the price for all of our sins. And then something that only God could do. He rose again. He came back to life after three days being after being buried in a tomb. So you guys, these are just some of the amazing events that have happened in our history, your history and my history of this world, the same earth that you and I walk on right now. That is so cool. So let's go ahead and jump into some worship time now, and then I will see you guys back to close us out in prayer. I love learning about this stuff with you and getting to spend time together in God's word and with him every week. All right, I will see you after worship.
All right, you guys, I had such a good time today. I am so glad that you tuned in online. Maybe you've seen me at the Richmond campus before, or maybe you're tuning in from our Missouri City campus or our Weston campus and just checking church out online. No matter where you came from, maybe we've never met. I'm so glad you're here and I love making new friends. We're gonna close in prayer today and say thank you, God, for keeping your promises and being someone that we can always depend on and always trust. Hold your hands and bow your heads with me and let's pray. God, thank you so much for this awesome day, for this time together, for the gift of the Bible, where we have so many stories that have been recorded and written down so that we can know more about you, strengthen our relationship with you, and continue to grow. God, we are so grateful that you always keep your promises, that you never leave, and that you're someone who we can trust in. We love you. Amen. All right, you guys, I will see you back next week. It's week two of December, and I cannot wait to show you what we're talking about. Bye.